Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 103, a very familiar section of Scripture. But it is Thanksgiving season, one of my favorite holidays of the year. As a matter of fact, I think in this sense it's the favorite because it's less commercialized. Even Christmas, which of course is so significant because it's, you know, remembering the birth of our Savior. But what the world, the way the world celebrates Christmas is just out of control. It's out of control. It's about everything else except Jesus. But at Thanksgiving, what do we do? We concentrate on Thanksgiving. We concentrate on family, concentrate on remembering our blessings and just being grateful to God. It's a great holiday. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Say it with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. All of his benefits. All of his benefits. His benefits cannot be measured. God blesses us with things that the world cannot give. And the world cannot take away. Hallelujah. I have riches in Christ that you can't even imagine. I am rich today in Jesus. Somebody say, I am rich today in Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, bless this word to our hearts. Help me with this message. And help us to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. There are so many things you can begin to count today among your blessings. And uh, somebody came out with this saying, you know, the best get-rich-quick scheme. The best get-rich-quick scheme is count your blessings. You, get, you count your blessings and all of a sudden you're rich. But I'm sure this morning if I were to go around the audience and you would begin to just mention a few things. I'm going to take a, a survey of our audience. I want you to say one or two things that you're thankful for this morning. It could be for people, it could be for something about God or something about our country, something about your health, whatever. <clears throat> we'll take some and I'll recite them. We can't see you on camera, but I'll recite them back to the camera so they can hear. We'll start over here. Give me one or two things you're thankful for over here in this section. Life itself comes from God, amen? Over here. You, you made it through a rough weekend by God's grace. Amen. Somebody else. Yes, Pastor Angel, you had your hand raised? Thank you that we celebrated our Yes, God gave us 50 years of marriage. And we're still in love. Somebody say amen. <laughs> yes, Miss Donna. Our relationship with God. What else? For the day that God gave you to live this day. Amen. Brother Joe, did you have your hand raised back there? You didn't. All right. But you're thankful anyway. You still think. Carolyn? Yes, for those who have recovered from COVID. Amen. Somebody else in this section? Yes, that Annie's still with us. We need you here, sister. Yes, Adelaide. Yes, cancer is a cancer uh, uh, recovered person. Amen, amen. Yes, Eileen. A new grandbaby, yay! Congratulations, Miss uh, uh, Gloria. <laughs> I was going to call you Hermony. That's funny. Okay. Yes, he's real. That's right. He is a present help, help in the time. Yes, Miss Vicky. I am thankful this morning. God has healed my body. Amen. 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 <laughs> God bless you, Mother. Amen. That's Geraldine, by the way. Geraldine. Yeah, you go over there and just give her a high five later on. And we have Sister Hermony, who's 101. All right. Yes, uh, Lourdes. Wow. Our faith is real, isn't it? It's not just make-believe. Yes, uh, Liz. 
Family, yes. How many are thankful for family? Yes, Miss Maureen. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I don't know if you heard that on the camera. Her niece has received a kidney transplant. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Brother Arthur. Uh, Arnold, excuse me, Arnold. Yes, for God's message to you. All right, Brother Joe, you thought of something. Yes, yes, on Wednesday nights, Reverend Torres has been teaching the Bible study on James, and boy, there has been such a hunger. We can't wait until this week. We'll, we'll be at Viva, those of you who want to go, but next week we'll resume the Bible study. Mr. Jasmine, did you have your hand raised? Thankful for life, amen, and health, yes. Yes, uh, Sabita. Now, she's over two pounds. She was 14 ounces. You could fit her in your hand. Yes, Dixie. Wow, cancer survivor, 40 years. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Ruksha. Wow. This, uh, this lady, for those of you who are watching at home, is a chaplain at the hospital, and she's had to walk through many COVID wards and so on, and she's safe and sound. God has protected her. Brother Angel. Amen. How many of you can lift a hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me? I want to say something. Yes. What well, did I miss? Somebody? Yes, brother uh, Thomas. You know they say that the Christian people. I'm strength. So there you go. God bless you, Reverend Thomas and Beverly. Once again, welcome. All right. I know we could go on, but I want to share something with you t today. Did you raise your hand, uh, uh, Alice? Is that you, Allison? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, Carmen. Fifty three. Sixty three. Yes. Yes. And for your family. God is. Yes. Our catalyst fame. God has kept us tensional. You don't leave it to chance. Saying if you leave it to chance. Most often, you will forget to be thankful. So you have to determine to be thankful. You have to be intentionally thankful. You say, I will make it my business. The Lord spoke to me this week. He said to me, David, can you make time to be thankful? Make time. And I said, I never thought of being thankful as make time for something. But I felt like the Lord spoke that word to my heart. He said, will you make time to be thankful? Wow. Wow. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to make more time to be thankful, count my blessings. You see, being thankful and counting your blessing is a way to preserve and protect your joy that the devil is trying to steal. You see, the devil is actively trying to wear down the saints, right? His business is to kill, steal, and destroy. But the joy of the Lord is a buffer. Thankful spirit is a fortress. Hallelujah. A thankful heart is a protection around you. Being grateful is not just a nice idea. It is part of the attributes of God. It's something that God uses to strengthen our hearts, to protect us from the evil one, and to refresh us and to renew us. Yes. Pastor Angela mentioned before about how David, when he was so beset with problems running from King Saul, how many of you would like to be hunted down with a contract on your life? How many of you know that could spoil your whole day right there? That could give you a bad day. You know, somebody's out to kill you. But David said in the Psalms, he says, I was discouraged. I would have given up. And then I began to think about the goodness of God. I began to think about his benefits. I, I began to recount the many times that God saved me, the many times that God delivered me. Is there a witness in the house this morning? The many times that he protected me. 
all of a sudden your spirit is lifted. And you're not so afraid. You're not so worried. Because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. And there's no limit with him. See, a grateful heart for a Christian is not just something we do. It is part of our new creation in Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Thankfulness comes with the package. When you become a Christian, you should have a thankful heart. It's part of our new nature. Somebody say, it's part of my new nature. And I was going to say this later, but I'm going to say it now. You know, this is really a poor testimony sometimes. And I've been there myself, so I'm not picking on anybody. When you're in public and you get so grumpy and so complaining and so critical, and then all of a sudden somebody says, didn't I see you in church? Didn't I, didn't I see that bumper sticker on the back of your car that says, you know, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian? You know, I'm serious. Uh, Brother Lonray and I were having a conversation last, a couple of weeks ago. He said that how sometimes in public, restaurants, Christians can be so mean to the, to the wait staff, the service. That's terrible. It's terrible. You know, we, we complain about every little thing. And I'm talking to myself, too. I've been there. I've done this. And God has convicted me. We, we need to watch because the world is watching us. Somebody's watching you. It's part of our nature. We need to cultivate. I want you to notice this, that the one person in the whole universe that didn't have to be thankful was thankful, and that it was Jesus. Why would Jesus have to be thankful? He's perfect. But Jesus demonstrated this for us. Say, it was for us. It was for us that he made an example of thankfulness. He was an example of thankfulness. When he blessed the fish and the loaves and he multiplied, what did he do? The first thing he did, he took them in his hand and he prayed and he thanked God for the food. So bowing your head at a restaurant is still a good witness. Somebody say amen. Still a good testimony. When Jesus in Matthew 11 and Luke chapter 10, when Jesus saw that the people, ordinary people, were receiving his message and being set free. He rejoiced in his spirit, and he gave thanks to God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, but you have revealed them unto the babes. The sincere people, the ordinary people, the humble people were given the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. He rejoiced about that when he was standing at the tomb of Lazarus, about to raise him from the dead. He knew what he was going to do, but he raised his voice, and it says, Jesus lifted his eyes, and he said to the Father, I thank you that you have heard my prayer. He said, I know you always hear my prayer, but I'm saying this for the sake of those who are listening right now, for the crowd. So Jesus, and there are other places in the Bible where Jesus expressed gratitude. I, it just hit me this morning. That's an important thing to remember, amen? amen? In spite of our trials, setbacks, many things we don't understand. If you've lived any period of life in this world, you're going to experience trials. Jesus said in this world you will have tribulations. But be of good cheer, be of good comfort. I have overcome the world. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, 1 Thessalonians 5, this is the amplified version, in all situations, in everything, no matter what the circumstance, be thankful and continually give thanks to God for this is the will of God. This is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Are you with me this morning? Being thankful is God's will. Sometimes we pray, you know, not my will, thy will be done. Well, God, what is your will for my life? Well, one part of it is being thankful. That's part of God's will. And it's not just in the good times. As a matter of fact, some of you will bear witness with this. Sometimes when you've gone through a hard time, afterwards, you're more thankful than you were before. Am I saying the truth? 
I, I've seen this in my own life. I've been through a tough time. All of a sudden, I don't, I don't take my health for granted. I say, thank you, God. You give me another day of life. God, you've protected me. You've kept playing it. <laughs> this was during the time, this was back in the early 70s, when General Franco was still in power, the dictator there in Fr uh, Spain. And religious liberty was not allowed. And so there was a man by the name of Arthur Blessed. How many of you remember Arthur Blessed? He used to carry a cross on his shoulders around the world. He carried the cross, literally carried a physical cross to be a witness to the world. And everywhere he went, people asked, why are you carrying that cross? He said, well, I'm glad you asked. And now he's going to share his testimony. So it became a platform for him. But he was there in Spain holding a service under the auspices of the Episcopal Church in La Plata Mayor, which is one of the main squares in Madrid. And we found out about it while we were visiting Spain on vacation. We didn't intend to go, but when we heard about it, we decided to go. And it was at night, and there were hundreds of Christians there kneeling and praying, and Arthur Blessed was there with his cross. And all of a sudden, there was a whistle, and police officers started coming in from every part of the square with these big sticks, the night sticks, you know, the batons, whatever they call them. And they started saying, get out of here, clear this place at once. And they started beating the people and arresting the people. And me, like a typical tourist who was clueless, I started taking pictures of this. <laughs> so I had my little Kodak Instamatic camera. Now I'm giving away my age. And I'm taking pictures, and all of a sudden I turn this way, and I flash one right in the face of a police officer. And he says, you two guys, come with me. And he's, and he's taking us into the paddy wagon. And my wife, who spoke a little bit of... No, 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 no. He took the camera away from us. He, de he detained us. We were there for two hours. They took the camera somewhere, and they probably... Uh, processed the film or took the film and then came back and they let us go. Well, we were frightened. I had a hard time sleeping that night. When we got to back to America, how many of you know I was thankful? I was thankful for my freedom. Thankful for this country. I know this country is far from perfect. But let me tell you something. There's a lot of people who would love to be here. Come on now. There was a man by the name of Matthew Henry he was a well-known Bible scholar and commentator. You've read his comment, uh, commentaries, Matthew Henry. One time he was accosted by a thief, and he all of his He got home that night, and he decided what to write in his diary, and he thought about it, and as a good Christian, here's what he wrote. Lord, help me to be thankful. First, because I've never been robbed before. <laughs> Second, because although he took my wallet, he did not take my life. Third, although he took all my money, it was not much to start with. <laughs> and finally, because I was the one robbed and not the one doing the robbing. What an amazing thing to turn that around, right? Talk about turning uh, a lemon into lemon, right? If you look at the original 20 in the Plymouth Colony, the reason we celebrate Thanksgiving here in the United States. There were 102 pilgrims who arrived on the shores of Plymouth, Massachusetts. I've been there. Anybody ever been there to Plymouth, Massachusetts? There's an actual stone that marks the place where they landed. Out of the original 102 pass passengers, only 44 lived through the first year. The majority of them died from cold, disease, sickness. They didn't know how to handle the cold weather and the new environment. Only 44 survived. The first settlers were so dependent on God and the providence of God that if the Lord had not intervened in this Christian gathering of people, none of them would have made it. In March, the following year of 1621, after a bitter cold winter, they just barely survived. They were strengthened by the help of the local natives of the Patux Patuxet tribe who taught the pilgrims how to cultivate corn, how to extract sap from the trees, how to catch fish in the rivers, 
And so in November of 1621, the first Thanksgiving was celebrated in humble appreciation and protection for their survival and the providence of God. It was not because they had, you know, a bonus, they got a, a paycheck or the, everything, they won the lotto. It was because they survived and they made it. And God even used the natives, the original American citizens there, to help them to survive. I want to ask you a question. Is there old enough to remember my parents telling me stories of the depression that they went through in the World War II and what happened in Europe in the times where they had to share a loaf of bread? If they had some food, they had to think about their neighbor who didn't have some food. If they had some milk, they had to think about that poor mother down the street who didn't have any milk for her child. You see, when you're in a difficult situation, all of a sudden, you have to be less selfish. You got to learn to work as a team. Somebody say amen. You got to think about each other. I want to give you some quick statistics before we leave this morning. Some sobering statistics that will hopefully stay with us and, re and, 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 and stay in our consciousness. If you have food in your refrigerator today, clothes on your back and a roof over your head and a place to sleep. Statistically, you are better off than 75% of the world's population. I'm going to say that again. If you have food in the refrigerator, clothes, a roof over your head and a place to sleep, there's only 25% of the rest of the world that has that. 75% of the rest of the world doesn't have all those wonderful commodities, those blessings. There are over 1 billion people who live in uh, temporary shelters. That's almost a seventh of the world's population. Cardboard boxes, tin, uh, tin roof shacks, one room mud huts, filthy crowded tenement buildings. If you can attend a church meeting without fear, somebody said that before, or harassment, you are more blessed, and believe it or not, 3 billion people in the world suffer from religious persecution of some kind. Not all of it is life-threatening. Some of it is that, you know, they're just not allowed to, to worship. Like in China, for example, it's becoming more and more difficult. Even in places like India, believe it or not, it's more and more difficult to worship Christ openly and to proselytize for Christ. You can be arrested. Your, your church, they are burning down churches. In China, they're taking down crosses off the buildings, and they're insisting that the only religion you can preach is a communist religion. It has to include the communist ideology. If there's food on the table, let's give thanks today. Somebody say amen. amen. Did you know that by the end of the day today, 22,000 children will die of starvation? By the end of today. 22,000 children will die of starvation. You see, when people who are not even Christians hear these things, they become thankful. But for us, it should be even more natural to be thankful. It should be automatic. Somebody say amen. We are blessed with more riches than material things. I started to mention this before. We are blessed with riches that money cannot buy that no one can take away from us. I've got my sins forgiven. Hallelujah. I've got a shelter in the time of storm. I've got peace that the world can't give, and the world can't take it away. I have a reason for living. I understand why I'm here on this earth. I have no confusion about my identity. We've got a world today where people are so confused about their identity. But in Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. We are children of the Most High God. We were once alienated from God, but now those of us who are far away have been brought near through the blood of the cross. Hallelujah. We have been made complete in Christ. I could go on and on and on and on. I have a God who's not given up on me. I have some friends. If you've got any friends, just raise your hand right now. You got any friends, all right? Well, that means you're blessed. Hallelujah. You got somebody who will be there for you. Even if it's just one person, you're blessed. Are you getting my drift here this morning? 
Let me close. As I said before, a thankful heart will be a fortress against anxiety, against fear, against discouragement, because the more thankful you are, the closer to God you are. Woo! Doesn't the Bible say come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with so the more you praise him, the more thankful you are, the closer you are to God. And then the devil, the devil has no foothold in your life. He's got to run. Hallelujah. He's got to run. He said, he's got to say, this one is covered by the blood. This one is a praise, a praiser. Stay away from that one. Even for your health. I mentioned this before. There's been a study by a, a renowned professor, uh, Robert Emmons. University of California, Davis campus, that a thankful attitude lowers blood pressure, improves your immune function, and facilitates more efficient sleep. Hallelujah. My wife and I uh, try to pray. We've been doing this more recently. I mean, we pray all the time. I mean, we are prayers. I'll tell you, we are. I'm not showing off. We do pray. But lately, we've been praying just before we go to sleep. We've been finding that sometimes the enemy tries to disturb our sleep. You ever have the enemy just brings all of a sudden worries come to your mind? So we just take a preemptive move. We just join hands. We thank God. We say a prayer. We bless each other. And we sleep like little babies. Come on now. Hallelujah. Another university study found that people who are more grateful are actually have a better Heart, heart health. It improves heart health, the heart condition. Less inflammation and healthier heart rhythms. These are actual medical tests that were done, scientifically proven. Another university of Utah, uh, Utah and Kentucky found that gratitude can boost your immune system. I already mentioned that. I want to say this as I close this morning. Get in the habit of of everyday thankfulness. Start with little things. Thank God for everything. If I have somebody who brings a box to my house, I thank them. If somebody brings a plate to my table, I thank them. When they take the plate away, I thank them. Hallelujah. I try to, I thank the bank teller. I, I thank the fast food when I drive through McDonald's. Come on now. Thank you for your service. If you see a, a military person who served this country, thank them for their service. Amen? Amen? Let's do this as a lifestyle. Are you with me today? Yes. And I'm going to say this, and I know you're going to get impacted by this, but don't wait for a funeral to say something nice about that person. Have you ever noticed that at a funeral, nobody says anything bad about the person? There's always nice things. Hopefully, they've earned it. But wouldn't it be nice to send somebody flowers while they're alive? Come on now. Come on now. We don't have to wait till somebody's on their deathbed and say, oh, that person is such a nice person. <laughs> I remember one pastor who, uh, <laughs> who was getting very little encouragement, and he finally got up in front of the congregation he said, I'm so sorry. I'm really down today. And, you know, I've just been going through a tough time. And uh, I'm sorry that I'm not really myself today, you know. Well, after so service, the phone began to ring. Pastor, what's wrong with you? You got to pray through, brother. What is, what is it with you? And, and all of a sudden, he started getting all these calls about people rebuking him, telling him he had to be more joyful. But what if those same people had been encouraging him all along? And praying for him all along. Somebody say amen. amen. Your prayers have sustained us. Let me just go on record. Your prayers are vital to this church. I can look you right in the face and tell you, we need your prayers. Every department, the youth, the children, hallelujah, the, the intercessory prayers, and the adult ministry, we all need your prayers. The worship team, we all need your prayers. Let's consider and remember the true riches we have in God. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope 
and a future. Psalm 68 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily bears our burdens. The King James Version says, Who daily loads us with benefits. I'm thankful this morning I have a God who is a father to me, who personally cares for me. I'm thankful today for the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. When others thought that I was not much to look at or that I didn't have much of a future, the Holy Spirit decided to go to work on me and make me like Jesus. I thank you that I have a refuge in times of storm, a rock that my life is planted on. And I finally, I am thankful that I can give and not always have to be the one being given to. Because the Bible says, more blessed to give than to receive. I'm thankful I have something to give this morning. Let the church say amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Give God praise in the house. I want to do something. I want to ask the worship team to come back. I want you to do that chorus uh, that we sang, no more crying, no more complaining. <laughs> Perfect for Thanksgiving. Somebody say amen. If you have had a tendency to complain, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But I can, I can assure you that probably all of us, unless you're 100% angel, uh, I don't mean you, brother, just a, <laughs> I know you the angels in me. heaven. Uh, we've, all, we've all missed opportunities. And maybe you missed opportunities to be nice to somebody. You know, uh, they say confession is good for the soul. I've got to admit to you, there's many times after I hung up with somebody, I was trying to get service or the internet went down or the bank deposit was mixed up. You know, you're just trying to resolve something on the phone and you've been switched around. You've been on hold for 20 minutes. How many of you can get that a little bit of an attitude? Just a... Just a tiny bit. Uh, try. <laughs> Somebody said try getting through to Social Security. Don't even get me started. We're trying to get through to the government, right? But one of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. In Spanish, they say paciencia. You got to have patience. And I need more. I need more. I'm, God's still working on me. And please, please, pick up the phone. If God puts somebody in your heart, you say, you know, I hope the pastor reaches out to that person. And I'm not buying, trying to be funny. If God put that person on your heart, maybe you should call them. Right. Amen. Uh, are you with me? Uh, we can only carry so many people. We need this team here to multiply. Reach out to new people. Reach out to your neighbors. Make sure you pray for those uh, High Priest Aaron prayer cards that we, we filled out. And if you have one, put it in the box here. Amen. Could we sing uh, that, that verse or the whole thing? Let's sing the, the whole song today. You did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear. Let's sing it, and then we'll do the benediction. Here we go. You did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear, but you created me to worship daily, so I'm going to leave it all right here. Sing it again. You did not create me to worry. You did not create me to fear. You created me to worship daily, so I'm going to leave it all right here. My hands are raised. My hands are raised because I surrender. Your will is what's best for me. I worship you because you're Jehovah Jireh. Bow before the King of Kings. No more crying, no more complaining. No more crying, no more complaining. I believe your word is true. Lord, you promise never to leave me. 
lonely so this is what I'm going to do I will trust in you Lord I will trust in you Lord I will trust my trust in you did not create me to worry you did not create me to fear, but you created me to worship daily, so I'm going to leave it all right here. My hands are raised because I surrender, your will is what's best for me. Worship you because you're Jehovah Jireh. I bow before the King of Kings. And no more crying, no more complaining. I believe your word is true. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you promise never to leave me lonely. So this is what I'm going to do. I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust in you, Lord. I will put my trust in you. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. I hope somebody has gotten some freedom today from hearing the word of God. How many of you have been touched by God today? And those of you at home, I trust the word has penetrated your heart, encouraged, inspired you. I'm going to ask Pastor Angela to close in prayer this morning. And God be with you. We uh, will be happy Thanksgiving. We will be traveling, as Angela mentioned before. But Tuesday night, we'll see you on the phone, or we'll hear you on the phone. <laughs> Tuesday night, don't forget to call in. I wanted to say, I was thinking over there, no rock's going to take my place. Amen. There's no rock that is going to take my place to praise him. I'm going to praise him. So we're going to sing this song as we leave every praise, all right? So Lord, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of knowing you. I thank you for the privilege of having you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our lives. You never leave us or forsake us. You are always with us. I thank you for the church, Lord, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which Catalyst is a part of. We thank you for brothers and sisters who pray for us and hold our hands up. We thank you for the gift of family. We thank you for the food on our table. And Lord, I just want to praise you for everything, Lord. Lord. Even the difficult times, Lord. We have seen you faithful. You've been faithful to us, Lord. And as we leave, we're going to sing this song, Every Praise is to You, O God. And may we sing it from the bottom of our hearts in Jesus' name. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Attitude of gratitude. Amen. Every word of worship. Every word of worship is one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise to our God. To our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise to our God. To our Let's take it up, church. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship is one accord. 
every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. To our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. Born of glory. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. To our God. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. To our God. Glory hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. To our God. Every praise. See, he's my savior. God, my savior. And he's my healer. God, my healer. And he's my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Is he your savior? God, my savior. Is he your healer? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. One more time. Is he your savior? God, my savior. Is he your healer? God, my healer. Is he your deliverer? God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. 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 Every praise. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. One of Let me hear you say every praise. Every praise. I can't hear you, church. Every praise. I still can't hear you. Every praise. Come on now. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Can we do a little a cappella, church? Every Come on. Praise. Every praise. Clap your hands and move your feet. Somebody's walls just came down. Hallelujah. The walls of Jericho just came down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or even think, according to his great power that is at work within us, to him be glory throughout endless ages in the church and in Christ Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God be with you. Bless you. Happy.